Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Here, everyone understands that during the hot and dry summer, many parts of the country have been having, there is a chance of water shortages. There's already a hosepipe ban in Northern Ireland, and one is due to start in northwest England on Sunday. What customers find harder to understand is how so much water is allowed to leak from pipes all year round. Well, the Environment Secretary, Michael Gove, isn't best pleased either. He told water companies today they must do better. In the weeks where rain seemed like it would never come, the water companies told consumers not to waste any. And all the while it was pouring at an increasing rate from the supply networks they are supposed to maintain. Some of it was running down the drains of this street in East Manchester when Paul woke up on Saturday. It was coming from the pavement. It actually lifted the pavement up, so it was coming out of both sides onto the road and into the gardens. He called United Utilities at 8 to report the leak. 17 hours later, he says, it was still running. It was very surprising because it flooded actually two properties and it actually blocked three grids. So you can imagine how much rain it actually takes to block a grid. So the amount of water to block three grids on the main road, it, it must have been quite a substantial amount of water. Figures for the whole of the UK, including Scotland and Northern Ireland, aren't available because of the way they're calculated. But in total, more than 3,000 million litres of water are leaked every single day in England and Wales. That amounts to an average of 123 litres per household per day. The worst offending companies, Seven Trent, United Utilities and Thames Water, lose far more than that. And both United Utilities and Thames Water missed their wastewater targets this year. The water level here is many, many metres below where it should be at this time of year. Customers of United Utilities will ask themselves whether the water that was here has been used by them or whether it's simply been wasted. Today, the chief executive of United Utilities was just one of the water company bosses called into a meeting with government ministers to explain. The discussion was very much around what are we doing uh, rather than express criticism. I mean, all of those meetings are generally challenging, but I, th I found it very helpful and very constructive. But the government said after the meeting it wants water companies to be more proactive and to reduce leakage by 15% before 2025. The message was reinforced that while we want customers to do their bit, we actually need companies to be investing more in their resources in order to tackle the leaks, to make sure that uh, they anticipate the future environmental challenges which we all face. This year's weather might have been unusual, but it's not impossible that it will happen again. Ministers want suppliers to anticipate the kind of problems that turn this reservoir into a meadow in a single dry summer. Damon Greed, News at 10, Lancashire. The Environment Secretary, Michael Gove, has asked water company bosses to explain why they haven't met targets for reducing leakage as the country struggles to cope with one of the hottest summers in living memory. Eight companies have been invited to the meeting. Out of the 20 water companies in England and Wales, nine missed their targets. Three only just met them. Total leakage now stands at more than 3,000 million litres a day. It's almost unimaginable. Here's Alex Forsyth. The consequence of this long, hot summer. Rivers left parched, reservoirs running dry. Record temperatures mean in parts of the country, water is in short supply. And even this weekend's rain hasn't replenished reserves. Today, the bosses of eight water companies were summoned here by the Environment Secretary, Michael Gove, to answer questions about why they are wasting so much water and why, rather than getting better, things seem to be getting worse. Last year, 3,123 million litres of water was lost through leaks every day. That's equivalent to more than 1,200 Olympic swimming pools, and it's up on last year. In fact, over the past five years, there's been no improvement on the amount leaked. And last year, nine of the 20 major water companies in England and Wales missed their targets for reducing leakage. Hello, Mr Mogford. Alex Forsyth from BBC Newsnight. Hello there. Have you got a second for a quick chat? Just wondering how it went in the meeting. We caught up with some of the bosses. Steve Mogford runs United Utilities, which covers the North West. 
It met its leakage targets, but is about to impose a hosepipe ban. You've got to look at what we're doing to address leakage. We've got uh, double the number of teams out in the field, um, considerable amount of work, use of technology to identify and fix leaks. And we're fixing more than we've ever done before. Steve Robertson runs Thames Water, the worst for leaks. We're fixing around about 4,000 to 5,000 leaks each month right there's now. There's still millions of litres of water being yeah, leaked every right, day, yeah. just wasted. Yeah, and you know, it's just obviously it's a, it's a long-term thing. If you go back and over time, there's been a significant reduction in leakage, but clearly there's a lot more to do. His firm has suspended dividends to shareholders, it says, to prioritise investment. Has too yeah. much money been focused on the profit-making side of the water industry yeah. and not enough on the infrastructure and the customers. Is that, yeah. Has that been the problem? You know, I, I can understand. When you look at the, the size of dividends, you know, people think, wow, it's a huge amount of money. But if you put it into the context, I mean, I think if you look over the, the, the last 10 years and we sort of take things right to the end of this, this, this period, we'll have spent round about £30 billion pounds now, during the same period, we've, we have, we've, we've given you know, pretty decent dividends, around about 1.1 to 1.2 billion over the same period. Now, if we'd spent all of that, obviously we could have done more, but it wouldn't have fixed some of the, the, the fundamental things that, that, that we're addressing. Technology is one solution being used. Anglian Water has drones to identify leaks and their performance is improving. But beyond tackling wasted water, plenty say the industry needs wider reform. The regulator has, not, has been too generous in the past, so the regulatory system has allowed companies to make uh, returns which actually exceed the stock market as a whole in what is, after all, a pretty low risk industry. But the other issue is the companies taking responsibility for their customers' perception and, and dealing with that. <laughs> message is on its way. Since privatisation in 1989, the water companies have often been accused of generous dividends and executive bonuses. They point to billions of pounds invested in return, but some say the spoils of what is a monopoly haven't been fairly shared. They've been making returns of the order of 12%, sometime even higher than that, which is 50% more than the regulator has been using when he sets the tariffs that they should be charging. So uh, uh, one has to ask, is this fair? The water regulator Offwatch is introducing tighter standards on financial structures, bonuses and dividends, and leaks. But is renationalisation the ultimate answer? Perhaps unsurprisingly, the water firms say no. We've seen improvements not just on leakage, but in terms of water quality. Beaches are much cleaner than they were before. Those who would argue that we need to think about nationalisation need to answer the question, where would the money come from in future to make sure that we can continue to invest to address those challenges? Challenges including more extreme weather. The real question though, whether the industry in its current form can stay afloat. Joining us now, Faisal Shaheen, the director of the Centre for Labour and Social Studies, and Robert Colville, the director of the Centre for Policy Studies. And you've been making the case, Faisal, that actually the current status can't last, that it is time for renationalisation. Yeah, look, the privatisation of water hasn't worked and it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense on a very basic level. It's a natural monopoly. So Thames Water is my provider. When I'm not happy with a service, I can't change it. So it doesn't work in terms of competition. There is no competition. And then when you look, as we heard there, about levels of profits versus levels of investment, um, you know, the thousand plus swimming pool size of water that are lost every day. And um, you look at the price hike, so 40% in real terms since it's been privatized. And it's very difficult to make the case for why it is. And actually, we are the odd ones out. We forget that actually England, you look at Wales, you look at Scotland, you look at Northern Ireland, all of those, all of those places run their water for no, non-profit or pu as publicly owned. It, it must be, Robert, the, the cushiest job in the world being a water company boss. You have your customers determined by geography and your prices determined by the regulator. And as long as you're not basically poisoning people, you rake in the profits. I mean, it's crazy, isn't it? Well, the weird thing about this whole debate is that the person, the politician in Britain who has been rudest about the water companies recently isn't Jeremy Corbyn, it's Michael Gove. If you read his speech to, the, to, to Water UK, it's absolutely excoriating about the behaviour of the water companies. But if you go back and look at 
why privatization happened. The weird thing about this whole, this whole debate, and especially the focus on leaks, the reason, one of the big reasons that privatization happened was because there were too many leaks. Because what happened was that when the water networks were publicly, publicly owned, they were in competition for capital with everything else the government wanted to spend money on. And so the government simply never got around to spending money on, on the water industry. But it the reason, like even, the re the re even so under privatization, they still haven't got around no, to fixing the leaks. No, the leaks are down by, are down by a third. Um, interruptions to, by, to supply are, are down fivefold. I mean, the, you, you re reference the fact that prices have risen, and prices have risen. But prices have risen because the private industries have, have, and their investors have had to pump enormous amounts of money into fixing, a, into fixing a decrepit Victorian infrastructure. The, you know, these leaks are not new. new. We have been it? losing... Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I find it really interesting in the sense of you making the argument when CEOs are getting paid on average 1.2 million plus a year. I mean, it's a huge amount of money when there are these daily leakages. Um, I mean, the thing I would say is, of course, you need public ownership. We want to take account accountability there, and we want to bring that back into public ownership. It, but we also it want infrastructure investment. Uh, not 70 billion, uh, 86 billion. No, and that was that is a really misleading number written by in a report that was sponsored by the water industry. So no, it was. Uh, written in a report by us that wasn't sponsored by anyone. It was also written in a report sponsored by the water industry. I mean, I and think no one on the Labour side no, and no one on the Labour side has disputed that figure. No, at they all. have actually. And the big misleading thing about this, John McDonnell himself has disputed okay. it, which is that it's actually when it's a profit making asset, you can take that asset, you can borrow to invest in that as a strategic infrastructure, and then you can pay that back over years because it makes profit. And after ten years or ten years plus when we paid that back, that is then but where our do you get that from where ownership. Even if it, that sum is 86 or 70 or 60 or, or less that is a huge amount to pull out now in the middle of whatever we're going through to spend on one project which is pulling all the water companies back into You know, this whole Where's narrative of like the, where the money comes from actually completely ignores the fact that we have not been making strategic investments at a time when borrowing is so cheap. And as a country, we could be doing that. And so it just plays into this really, this argument about austerity that Robert. is actually just economically incorrect. Um, well, A, that's nonsense. But also, I mean, if you say to people, we're going to put £86 billion on the national debt to nationalise the water industry, that's a very different thing from... Panic. we. that's the point. So there's two elements to this. The first is the upfront borrowing cost, 86, 90 billion at market rate, or you nationalise it for below market rate, in which case you have capital flight and no one in, ever wants to invest in this country again. The, the next part of that is how you then pay for the water industry going forward. Now, the estimates are that over the next 25 years, you'll need about 100 billion quid to, for new, you know new sewers, new reservoirs, new pipes. You're uh, arguing if, that if you this want is to as good as it if, gets. If this you, isn't as good no, as it gets. It's not we as can good do as it, way better. Yeah, we and can. we can do better if, instead of making the water industry work for profit, we make it work for people. Alternatively, we could, as Offort has recommended, introduce retail competition at the water level, saving people three billion. Okay, I would rather say... I would than they are. Yes, that's, that's the question. Absolutely. So um, you, you know, why haven't they done it all Michael, this time? As, as, Michael Gove has, as Michael Gove has said, you know, there are, off what and Michael, this is not a, com, a market. This is a series of effectively regulated private monopolies. Mm. The amount of profit that these companies can make is actually tied to the amount they invest in, uh, in, in improving their infrastructure. I mean, they, you you know, the Michael, you know, off what Pfizer Thames Water, you, you, you really mentioned Thames Water has been Michael fined, Gove Thames Water has been fined 110 Last million quid. I guess um, Michael Gove today bringing them in, but essentially it's a PR stunt. They don't answer to Michael Gove, they answer to profit, the, they to answer, their shareholders. They answer to and, off what? And what actually the idea that Labour Party is saying is let's bring that back to the water, a right, our right to water back into its no right No one from the Labour Party the has shown a shred of evidence that doing this will produce cheaper bills for We've consumers. Out of time. Thank you both very much. Thanks for coming in. I've been